Hey gamers, this week's interview is with Rakesh, who some of you may know as the Mookie Gun Guy, or the person who uh, made the Mookie Gun skin for 4.0. However, Rakesh is a role player and shares with us exactly what role playing is and how it works. Um, also take a look in the vid. Uh, I posted some pictures that Rakesh shared with us. They're absolutely amazing screenshots. If you haven't done so yet, load up your game, uh, take a listen, enjoy, and please remember to subscribe. Well, RB basically it's a kind of interactive storytelling. It has to involve at least two people. If there are not at least two people, then it's just writing a story. Um, Generally, at a glance, it reads something like you well something like the, the text you've seen about in a book. There are some descriptions that tell you what the character is doing at that time. How much? That's really up to individual taste and such. And then there are some parts that show you what the character is actually saying, like you know, like a dialogue. Uh, there is a distinction between in character and out of character stuff. Like, um, basically, out of character is designated by the acronym OOC, and in character is IC. Since sometimes you just need to communicate different kind of things with other people, especially when the RP is in some way plot driven. So, typically, it will take place, well, either in a different channel or group chat specifically created just for that. IN has private channels, so. That's a pretty good way to do it. Though, lately they've been kind of quick to block you if you write too many things in the private channel, so that's been kind of a bother. So you were saying in character and out of character, and it depended on if it was plot-driven, so there's more than one type of RP, and, and what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that uh, in character, out of character, that it depends on that, because, well... Some amount of out of character communication is generally considered a good idea, even if to say AFK. It's probably not something you want your characters to say. Uh, but as for the types of RP, uh, well, generally the main types that could be distinguished, I would say, would be the spontaneous kind of RP tea time. Like, there is no predetermined goal, it's just you bring the characters together and they interact and see what happens. Alternatively, there is more plot drone type of RP where you decide ahead of time that you want your story to progress in a certain way or towards a certain goal. And then you make some prior arrangements before that. Well, not necessarily detailing out every step of, a step of the way, but just to have an idea of what your goals are. And then afterwards you can RP according to that so that you're able to meet the goals of this story. I'm going to say that in some ways that sounds like a lot of work. Like that would have to be, you must have a lot of dedication and a real love of RP to, to do this. Um, well, it definitely is a lot, a bit more work to coordinate when there are, you know, more people involved for a longer period of time. That's kind of saying like the statics as opposed to pugs. <laughs> you know, it's not necessarily that much more work. Well, it's also a matter of personal preference. Some people prefer to just have a spontaneous interaction between the characters. They find that more interesting because it's less predictable. You don't know what which direction exactly it's going to take. And some other people prefer the more having more convoluted plots with things like plot twists or achieving something, some kind of character progression. And for that, it usually has to do at least some basic amount of pl uh, planning so that um, everybody involved knows roughly what you're aiming for. So why RP? Well, there are a whole lot of different reasons why one would RP and of course they're to some extent only individual, but um, one of the, at least for me, the main draw of RP is that it, um, it makes the game more interesting. Because uh, Ion has a whole lot of lore in it, and some of it maybe it doesn't make sense. Some of it has pretty big major plot holes, but um, 
being able to use that information in some kind of a way, being able to put, put a, you know, a spin maybe on some of it, find explanations why some of the stuff that just doesn't seem to make sense at a glance, how it could make sense, it makes the game more interesting, not just uh, during the RB itself, but as a whole. Because there's more to think about. And, well, there's also a certain amount of imagination in use when it comes to RP, because, uh, well, you have to be creative with it. I mean, you're not just going to RP that, um, this guy over there told me to kill three sprig workers, and so I shall do. Add some more old Englishy stuff and such, right? That's usually not exactly how it goes. So since I work as an artist, at least to me, being creative about the game makes it a whole lot more fun. Well, another thing is uh, the whole community aspect, because RPing is obviously not something that happens solo. It's not just a solo dungeon run, you need to interact with someone else. And uh, this is actually very interesting, because different people always come up with different even kinds of characters, and um, not everything about them is immediately apparent. There's stuff to find out. Some characters seem um, fairly plain on the surface, for instance, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a very elaborate backstory that may show later on in the story, so there's always something to discover. And I find that very interesting, you know, because there's always user-generated content for you to discover. That's probably, I think, one of the main draws about new expansions. There's, you know, all these new shiny things that you're going to see and going to learn. RP pretty much provides a steady flow of that sort of content. Yeah, I like that. And, and more than one person can have more than one type of, say, conspiracy theory on the same instance. That yeah, you can have, like, characters with their own hidden agendas that don't you don't see them right away, they're probably going to come up later. And sometimes something can seem completely random and off the wall, and later on you find out it was actually in some way significant. And yeah, that's, um, that's probably some of the fun of reading a good story. Well, except for our, except that, of course, in Ion you also have your visuals, you have your pre-costumes, and uh, thankfully the character creator is very flexible. So you can have a wide variety of character appearances. There could be more pants for females, though. There could be more what for females? Sorry? More pants for females in this game. I find that it's really hard to find a good pair of pants. They're really <laughs> skirt. <laughs> yeah, actually, now that you say that, I don't think there is very many, is there? I mean, what the hell? Guys get to wear skirts all day long. For girls, funny pants, that's a whole epic quest. But yeah, it's basically... Well, I suppose it's in some way a little bit like comic, like comics, in, a, in the sense that it's uh, illustrated, but of course it's all in movement and um, the pacing is entirely up to the player. I think it, you'd have to be really creative. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm thinking, well, you know, I know what some of the instances are like, and the, so then to put a, like another storyline inside that story... Because for me, part of Ion, um, you know, when you go to the the NPCs or as you're doing the instances, I'm I like to read everything that's going on so I understand it. And uh, one of the people I play with will search out, um, you know, some of the things about the storyline, and he'll always know what's, you know, well in the next patch, this is what they release. Like, this is who um, K. Rune really is, and you know, wait, going, oh, I can't wait till you do the next ca campaign because you're going to find out some more stuff. Tell me what you think, you know, and and so to put another storyline inside that, I just think, wow, you really, you really have to be creative. Um, so on, on that line then, so what about the role playing and the, the PV, like with those, those runs? Uh, well, actually about the, creativity there, I wanted to give an example, the one I thought of recently, and I still haven't found a good explanation for it yet. Um, you know, Telux Hollow, right? I think pretty much most people 
that got level 50 something know about the drudgery of killing sparkies. Uh, now the story is uh, Polaria, as far as I can as it can be told, is uh, on the outside of Atreia, and Teluk is in Polaria. The game tells you that Teluk grew up as big as it is because there's the shard from the tower lodged inside it, and that's why there's all the trouble with it. Now, Polaria is on the outside. The tower is on the inside. Something doesn't exactly work with that, does it now? So there you have a whole lot of room for some creative explanation of just what the hell happened there in that instance. And you can make a whole lot of stories even over some seemingly insignificant aspects of it. Uh, now about the topic of um, in-character instance runs, that's a thing. It normally works a whole lot better if everybody that is in the group is um, intending to roleplay there because, you know, I mean, it is fully possible to bring along people that aren't going to get involved with it because they're not role players, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit awkward for them. Though I've heard that some people just go and explain it away as they're just hired, hired help and thus they're only interested in getting it done, getting paid for it, and don't want to do all the small talk, right? Um, but um, usually in-character instance runs are done as part of some kind of a story normally, as far as I know, uh, in that you have some kind of a reason to be in that place. And, but generally it makes them fairly interesting to be in there, since it's not just, you know, go to boss A, do such, 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 go to boss B, who does this, 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 kills, run, and you're done. Got loot, good, didn't get loot, well, better luck next time. When you're RPing, then it kind of puts the whole got loot or didn't get loot parts to the side, and you actually can enjoy the instance in a slightly different light, depending on what the whole story is and how good it is and how involved everybody is with it. And actually running the whole instance can be fun again, because you're, there's something new about it. The tech the, how it is technically done is that um, you usually take some spots in between the fighting and whatever and save spots to do a little bit of talking and have the actual RP interaction, but um, during the fights themselves you keep that to the minimum since, you know, you can really only type so much when you're trying to fight a boss. How would PvE fit in with RP? PvE or PvP? I'm sorry, the RP with the PvP. Uh, well, normally you don't bring your RP in the PvP because you really only have so much time in PvP to react to what's going on and uh, Probably not a good time to be writing about the beautiful frills of your character's dress swaying in the wind, so to say. Uh, however, I suppose you could go, you could do your RP preemptively that you agree in the group to go venture out in the wilds of wherever, let's say Catalan, for some kind of a goal that is not necessarily just, you know, PvP itself. And then on the way that you run into the enemy faction, that you do your PvP, and then afterwards when you get to a safe spot, you can have some kind of a dialogue about that if you want to. Though, so, um, you actually mentioned cross-faction RP in a way there. That is that is possible. It does involve the translator, so the dialogue and, well, the conversation does get slowed down a fair bit due to translating, but... Um, there are websites and stuff like that that make it possible to make prior arrangements for people that play characters in the opposite factions to get together and um, have their RP. Uh, Serpan Khmer was uh, fairly popular for that for a while. So if someone was interested in um, role-playing an Ion, where would they go to find that information? Uh, well, the central hub, so to say, of information about role-playing in Ion is on ironroleplayers.com. It's also the first result on Google when you search for Ion role-playing, unsurprisingly. 
Uh, the site is not exactly bustling, but uh, if there is some kind of an event or such going on that would be interesting to somebody who just wants to see how RB goes or wants to participate in, then usually the information about that is going to be posted there. Um, the RB community as a whole is the most active on the server Bizarrefill right now. Though, as far as I know, the other servers see a little bit of RB here and there as well. Well, for a while it was extremely quiet, because some people, well, a lot of people actually got disinterested in the Ion in favor of the other new games that were coming out, though with 4.0, a lot of people have come back and uh, we also have some new players, and some of those are also role players, especially now that the first, you know, the rush of 4.0 has slightly worn off and um, the realization that the instant cooldowns are uh, pretty freaking high is starting to sink in that we're actually seeing a whole lot more role players nowadays. You know, I would love to go, like, so to speak, on a run just to experience it. Because um, I think, in all honesty, <laughs> I don't think I'm creative enough and I may be a little intimidated. Um, I, and I may not be the only one who thinks, gee, you know, that sounds really cool. And I think that'd be a lot of fun, but I'm not so sure I'm creative enough. Do you have people who are maybe, you know, a little more like followers instead of people actually making the stories, storylines or like, do you know what I'm trying to say? You have some that are more just followers and some that more are the creators? Uh, well, yeah, usually when some kind of a larger plot gets started by somebody, then there's one or a couple people that are leading it and setting the goals and the others needn't necessarily participate for all of it can just do some of it and usually there's somebody actually writing the main part of the story so that it has a certain well so that it has a storyline to follow uh about the creativity i would say that creativity is something that can be well not necessarily learned but definitely something you can get better at with practice because um, well you learn different kinds of tricks and plot devices and get ideas by interacting with our people in the community I would say that's very much like writing I mean basic stories like fairy tales they're typically not extremely well creative as far as the storyline goes that, but um, as the writer practices more and more, they're typically what they write is going to get more sophisticated, more interesting, and also more creative. Right, and I'm glad you did that comparison to a book because some people like to write stories and some people like to read stories. Um, but yeah, I was, usually what happens from the well community perspective, I guess you could say, is that the people who are new to it tend to be more quiet at first because they're observing, they're seeing exactly how role-playing goes, what to do, how does it work, because nobody really enters with a full understanding of the subject, since it's something that is that has few written guidelines, so to say, and a lot of individual interpretation, though that's also partially the beauty of it. But you don't have one set way that you have to role-play, you can you like one thing, you do it like that. You don't like it, you go with a different way. For instance, some people like to have a Legion chat in character. The actual explanation being that people are communicating in the game through some kind of communication charts or, well, whatever works. Um, but yeah, generally, from what I've observed is that usually those who are new to the, to the whole thing tend to be more quiet and observe it more and then eventually they sometimes come up with more interesting characters to themselves. You know, the first try is seldom the very best one in a whole lot of things. And generally everybody is fairly accepting of that and everybody that I know is uh, fairly encouraging for people to learn and try new things and, you know, maybe this works better, maybe that works better, that kind of thing. What if somebody just wanted to, um, like you said that the ironroleplayers.com webpage, is there um, a, a spot on there that 
if there was somebody, you know, somebody who's listening right now says, you know, wow, I'd really like to get a hold of someone and, and get involved in that. Is there some contact information there on who they could contact in game? Uh, yep. Usually you see people uh, posting there with the, you know, actual character names being used. And there's, there is such a thing as a tavern knight. Um, it may be a little bit overwhelming for a new role player, but if one wants to see how a kind of uh, a gathering of uh, characters and character would look like, then um, Terra Knight might be a good chance to do that. Or, you know, just to meet other role players, because they can be sometimes hard to find. <clears throat> and the information about Terra Knights and such is usually also on inroleplayers.com. Great. This has been this has been very interesting for me. Very interesting. Well, for a while, RP kind of and RPers in general and I, they got a bit of a bad rap out of that. Uh, there are quite a few people that didn't really want to go to the end game content. They were perfectly happy to limit themselves to just RP. And since naturally, since those people were the most frequently seen as RPers, then I think a lot of people got the idea that. You know, RPers, they just RP. They completely suck at everything else in the game. <laughs> Sorry for putting it that way, but um, that's kind of the impression I've sometimes run into, that if you RP, then you don't know how to play the game, and that's why you RP. Um, well, certainly there were some people that would do it like that, but they would just, just RP. <clears throat> uh, I would say that's kind of um, big fat generalization. And especially nowadays, it's definitely not true anymore because um, with the new expansions, the leveling pace has sped up significantly. And the new endgame content, <clears throat> well, it pushes you towards PvP whether you want it or not. There have definitely been some growing pains in the RP community over this whole topic. But um, I would say that um, nowadays there's a whole lot more of um, overlap between the players that do the different things, that do PvE, that do PvP, and those that do RP. And I personally think that RP is a, <clears throat> it adds a whole new layer of um, enjoyment to the game, because uh, myself, I got kind of bored with Iron around uh, a little bit before 3.0. The PvP was okay, <clears throat> I had fun, it did fine. The PvE was okay, nothing new there, but it was getting kind of, well, in a word, boring. There was a whole, it was just, you know, same old, same old, and it's like, ah, well, this game is not really fun anymore, so what else could I try? And then I looked into the whole RP aspect of it, because there were some terror nights, and I went there. At first, just listen, how it goes, and then uh, ran into some people that I knew from running instances together or whatnot, and found out that they were RPing. So I was like, no, oh, well, they're doing it too, maybe I should try it as well. And uh, I've had a whole lot of fun with it ever since, even though I still spend a lot of time both beeping and PDEing. 